Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show, and tonight we are reviewing Alita Battle Angel, 2019 cyberpunk film based upon a manga series. Bob, you actually read the series, right? I didn't read it, but I watched the video, uh, the, the anime that was made. Oh, right, the anime. Many, many, many years ago. Loved it, loved it. Been, I've been thinking about it intermittently for years, and then I just found out just last year that that yeah. uh, James Cameron was making this. What well, we that, felt, guys? we're going to give a quick spoiler-free yes. overview, and then when we get into the spoiler-ridden detailed discussion, we'll give you a warning. So why don't you give your overview to start? I, I absolutely loved it. I love robots. I mean, how could I not love <laughs> a book, a, a movie, a fantastic CG movie uh, with nanotechnology, battle suits, and cyborgs all over the place. So that, to me, that just vibrates my DNA, like very few movies do. But trying to step back and just evaluate, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I had such mm -hmm. a fantastic time. It, nothing really took me out. Um, mm -hmm. I thought the story, yeah, the story could have been a little bit tighter, um, but it was, everything else was so wonderful. It's a great adaptation from, from uh, uh, you, uh, what's his name, Yukito Kishiro, his, uh, his, uh, Battle Angel series. It's a, it's a, I think it's probably the most faithful uh, ever that's ever been mm -hmm. done. Th I thoroughly enjoyed it. The cinematography, the visuals, the CG. Uh, Rosa Salazar, who played Alita, was a presence in that movie. She was the only really purely digital creation, and she was a part of that film as as much as anybody. Mm -hmm. I loved it. I loved it. Absolutely. And there was no Uncanny Valley. I've heard some people oh. say that, that that Alita was in the Uncanny Valley. Not at all. No. I didn't get that at all. This was nope. not. You know the Polar Express at all? No, yeah, she yeah, wasn't. She was not an animated corpse like in Polar, <laughs> Polar Express. Right. She even from the, uh, you know, even from the, the advertisements that you might have seen of the movie, like her eyes are, are definitely much bigger than normal yeah. human were, eyes. It's a tribute, anime. right? But the anime characters. The uh, the computer graphics for those were, were wonderful. I thought the facial were expressions great. were great. Yeah, yeah they were, totally bought them. Absolutely, there were a couple of times where she made an expression that seemed just a tad off. But there's definitely no one mm -hmm. Kenny Valley there. She she was a, a living character in that movie. Totally pulled it off. Amazing motion capture and performance kind of fused into this amazing amalgam. I don't think, I've never seen anything like it. What do you think, Jay? I thought the movie was fresh. Um, I know a lot, I, reading other people's reviews, I'm seeing a lot of people talk about like, oh, it's like a you know, retread of a lot of different things. I mean, let's cut, let's cut through it. There's only so many things that can happen to yeah. people. You know, like, yes, a monster could be different or whatever, but it's still fighting a monster, you know? Yeah. You know, you have a super powerful weapon or a sword or whatever. Like, you know, how many variations can we the, come the up with? The intellectual space of science fiction is really well-trodden area. Right, area. exactly. Yeah. It's hard to come up with something that you would think, this is totally not derivative of anything I've ever seen before. It's getting kind of hard to do. That. Right, it, it's very rare that a movie yeah. will come out that for in any genre that yeah. does that. You know, even go to horror or whatever. Like, it's, it's very difficult. So I didn't really feel that way. I mean, there was a couple of... There was a few things in the movie that I'll get into in the spoiler-rich uh, segment, mm -hmm. um, but there was a few things that did take me out of the movie a little bit. Um, overall, I thought that the design was wonderful, the writing was wonderful, the dialogue could have been stronger in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. um, there was, Always a challenge. There's one yeah. character in particular that I wasn't that pleased with um, that took me out of the movie here and there. When I, you know, I'm just kind of like, oh, you know, that that line yeah. was delivered really flatly or whatever. Um, Alita, though. Everything about her, I loved. Mm -hmm. I loved her humanity, her enthusiasm, the, the joy that you could see flash on her face all the time. I loved all the action sequences that she was in. I loved the changes in her character that took place. Um, you know, she really was the star of the movie, no, and, and, and I just really adored her. Exactly right. what you told me this, Bob. They made this movie so you'd fall in love with Alita. And I fell in love with that character. Mm -hmm. I thought she was great. Yeah, yeah. and that's, that's an important thing that you're going to see in a lot of movies uh, that, that are coming out. When you're looking at the marketing and the advertising, that the thing they, they're really learning that they need to stress is that you, you can't say, this is a big action adventure and there's lots of explosions and CG monsters and stuff. You've got to have a character that people want to root for, somebody that they're mm -hmm. going to love. That's why the Marvel Universe is so popular. You, who doesn't want to hang? With Thor and yeah. Stark, who doesn't want to hang with these guys and just and want them to succeed no matter what they do? Right. So that so that's what they did for this movie, and I think it helped save the movie because its its uh, its box office has been much better than expected, but not 
it's not at the point where it's like a no-brainer for a sequel, and we must have a sequel to this movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we must. So see the movie two and three times, please. So, um, the, so it's very important, yeah, and they yeah. marketed this movie very, very smartly, and I think that contributes to what success it's had. Let's, so, let's end these spoiler-free. Well, let me uh, give you my summary. I mean, yeah. I boringly agree with both of you. I mean, I think yeah. I agree with everything you guys said. Uh, I loved Christoph Waltz in oh the movie. Oh, my God. He's a fabulous He's a actor. Dream. He did Inglorious Glor Bastards. That's when I fell in love with him as an actor. Uh -huh. I mean, he was How just, do you even describe... How do you... It was just how do you describe it was him? Perfect. Just, uh. And he was great in this movie. He's been great in everything that I've seen him in. Uh, um, I really loved the fighting... The fight scenes. Yes. And... Because this is a fun movie. Let's face it. This is this is you know it was it had enough plot and it was a good dark dystopian future which I love. Mm -hmm. Good tech, good CG, good, oh. very interesting. Like if you inv think of a, a world in science fiction, and then you explore the concept of that world adequately, mm -hmm. right? So I think they did that in this movie. There's always more that you could do, but you know maybe they were leaving room for sequels. But they did, you know, they adequately explored the whole idea of a future in which it's pretty much you know, standard procedure for people to have parts, you know? Mm -hmm. Everyone's a cyborg. Uh, and they did a good job of that. So, you know, a couple of times you're like, oh, that's interesting that they, you know what I mean? Yeah. They, they, you have to have that. Um, so, but the fun part of the movie for me was the fight scenes. They I, were wonderful. I, they were great. The choreography was wonderful. Oh, they were exciting. The bar fight scene, come on. And that last motoball, uh, yeah. that scene took Rodriguez, the director, Three years. <laughs> Three years he was working on that damn scene. That yeah. was an amazingly and complex it, it, and, it, and wonderful it, scene. You know, that does explain why that scene was exquisite. Mm -hmm. It was super yeah. complicated. Now, you know, you know, you ever watch anything where you get lost in the combat? You don't really follow. Yes. Yep. You know how hard it is for a, a director and a writer to come up with a combat yeah. that you can follow visually, that you don't get confused on who's that, where. That's a good point. I, you were able to follow it, but it was complicated. It was and very the, the complicated. Maneuvers, yeah. like, oh, that was a great maneuver. That yeah. was awesome. But it, but you were able to follow it. You didn't just feel like you know the camera was moving and you didn't know what was going on. It was very enjoyable to watch, and because we're a big you know kung fu fans too, from yeah. all the way going back back to Bruce Lee in the seventies. So like there every now and then I'll watch a movie that's like it's a kung fu movie or it's a fight movie and the fighting's bad. I'm like, well, how, well, how could they possibly? What's yeah. the right. point? Yeah. That's just the whole point of Iron it. Fist much? You know, Iron it's like, Fist yeah. is terrible. It's a bad fighting in a kung fu movie. But uh. you know, it's even little details. Like I, I'm when I watch a movie, I'm looking at things like lighting and even if yeah. it's CG lighting, the lighting has to be it's effective. Still Right. And the editing is also a very important thing to me because I do spend a lot of time editing and I, I love it. I love the craft of editing. And it really is like the editor's decision. When you like see characters move across the screen and they cut and they, the movement that they were making gets finished in the next frame, you know, that ease that you feel where you don't feel anything's disjointed, mm -hmm. that's the editor. Yes. yes. Right. right, and I get you know, and I guess everyone's kind of involved now because you have to has to have to also say it's the, the people doing the CG as well, mm -hmm. you know, and the storyboarding. So I think everyone is responsible for the editing now in a way that it wasn't yeah. maybe twenty years ago. But every time you see something complicated happen that you understand, that's the 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 editing and writing and everything have to sync up perfectly. So mm -hmm. I, I'm appreciating this movie on a lot of different levels. Yeah. Now. There, the, I've read a lot of criticisms. There's legitimate criticism. Yeah, so we can get into the spoiler version. Yeah. If you want, if you don't want any spoilers, this is the point to stop watching it. Yeah, I mean, my big criticism was the pacing was not perfect. Right, it was a little slow. It was in a little slow for a little bit long wind up. You know how sometimes you're watching a movie and you feel like you're still in the act one. You yeah. know, I mean? like the movie ends like the, the whole movie was act one. When did you, you never felt like you were on the adventure? Like right. things were happening, and. You did get to that point at the end, you know, towards like the third act of this of this movie, but it was a long lead up. I know why. Well, they had to establish the whole world. Right, right? there's I a mean, lot to lay down. It's yeah. hard to it's hard to yeah. do that kind of world establishment. But the other thing too is a long movie. You know, yeah, it didn't feel long. It, it, yep. it was exactly. over two hours, so it's a it lot of screen time. It is. And the other thing was this story is conceptualized to be multiple films. Yes, so exactly. It it did the if they're made if it's a trilogy it did the trilogy service to give, you, give some yeah. nice lead in so you really have a, a foundation for these characters. So I'll, let's go through some things that, you know, let's nitpick and go through some things that, that pulled mm -hmm. me out of the movie. So one of the things that took me out of the movie was when Dr. Ito, I like the character a lot. The actor did a great yeah. job. But when you realize that he's out hunting, you know, he, he's a... Hunter he's warrior. He's a bounty hunter. He's yeah. a bounty hunter. Yeah. 
and he's and he's and he's fighting with a, a sledgehammer with a rocket on it, yeah. which is from right Fallout, out of Fallout 4. 4 right. right, which is cool. I actually and, wanted to see one of and those. And Overwatch uses that same thing. Yeah, it's not it's not that That's uncommon cool. of a weapon, but that kind of weapon requires an amazing amount of strength, mm -hmm. which. You know, unless those people that are from the uh, the city that's in the sky, unless they're like superhuman, which I didn't pick up on anywhere in the film. Or you don't know what alloy that is. That could have been a lot lighter than you thought it was. But but also, how could he be good enough to be a bounty hunter? You know, I didn't feel. You know, he's a techie. Yeah. He's a doctor. Yeah. But I didn't feel like he fit in the role. They needed to give me some. Thing, some type of writing needed to occur to explain how he yeah. fit in that yeah, role. Yeah, and that would have been, yeah, would have been a little know. better if, it, if it, we had, you had a sense that he could take on some of these cyborgs and, like maybe and, he, and do well. Wouldn't it have been but, easy for them to say, you know, he reveals to her, yeah, I've got... I'm jacked up. I'm yeah. jacked up. Yeah. I've got robot yeah. arms. Then you're like, oh, okay. Right, right. Or, you know, yeah. I, I upgraded myself a little bit to be able to do this. But for a regular guy to maybe do Maybe that'll it, come out in the second movie. Maybe. You're right. Maybe. We don't know. Because yeah, he is from he is from Salem. So I have another one. This okay. is a big one. That's one of the ones, I have to say, that's one of the ones where, like, I'm okay give it as a, a gimme for now. Yeah. You know what I for mean? now, yeah. If they, yeah. they could... Because they could you don't know. There's so many unknowns here. How heavy is that thing? How much is the rocket really helping him? How much did he train with it? it it's not necessarily... You know, breaking the laws of physics. So right, but it just didn't feel. It didn't feel I like it was, it was different. Like a, I like the fact that it was different. It wasn't a typical, you know, yeah, hulking. But it still uh, has to. It still has to make sense, though. And it didn't make sense that, that he got into. You know, I like know. I was okay with it. Or he could have done something a lot more clever than brute force. You know, maybe mm. the way he fought these things was like using tech. It would have been very easy for him to be like, Brant, and EMP these people or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And don't forget, though, they, those bounties are put on cyborgs and. And you know, meet people, fully yeah, meet yeah. people. Meet so uh, uh, he could, he, maybe he didn't go up against a lot the of the FMPs, of, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, another thing that I really didn't like, I did not like the actor that played the boyfriend at yeah, all. Yeah, he was definitely a weak spot. I agree. Now, I admit that he his dialogue that he was asked to perform was bad. That yeah. the dialogue that character had was just not easy. It's like Star Wars level dialogue. That it's was not easy to deliver. Ian Johnson, Hugo. Yeah, yeah, and. I mean, uh, I didn't buy him. I didn't believe any of his feelings. I didn't no. really, it didn't sink in. And, and, you know, I don't know how, again, how important he, you know, because is he dead? We don't know. We don't know if he's dead. This is a world. He looks where, dead. Yeah. This is a world where people get it's pulled true. out of trash heaps. That's true. That's true. Okay. Although yeah, but that dead. would mess with the, with uh, Alita's arc a bit. And the, yeah. her boyfriend, the guy she loved, is dead. All right, so she's let's like, say, go to then let's say he's dead. And okay. Chew gum. Fine. Let's say he's dead. It's even worse. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> because if, if we really had an introduction, a, a love story, and an end to a love story, it has to be super tragic. And yeah. I just didn't feel yeah. it enough. He disappears in the clouds. And all I could think was, that's the best face that actor can conjure as he's falling to his death. It just didn't seem <laughs> yeah. legit to me. Well, Jay is notoriously persnickety about, about bad acting and dialogue. I mean, um, and no, um, in character like, relationships, uh, she true. was all in. Yeah, she I was in. I believed her she, yeah, love. Right, true. But that's what Perfect. made. That's why the, the love affair between them felt false to me because I felt like he was taking advantage. Right. of Right. It was mostly from from her end. It I'll, wasn't I'll, Anakin I'll bad. It wasn't Anakin no. Skywalker bad. Not like but, I hate sand bad. Yeah, yeah, it, did, stuff, it didn't take bad. me out of the movie bad. It was. It was. I agree though. It was not the strongest performance right. in the movie. One yeah. thing that I thought about him is like he looked like he just came out of a boy band. He's just too much of a pretty boy. Put some scars on his face. It's just. Is a exactly. He was too slum. clean. He Come was on. yeah. It was too. Yeah. It was all too buttoned up. Just a little bit too yeah. nice. Um, you know, maybe he auditioned much better than he, you know, laid it out in the movie. Bottom line was, pff, no good. You know, glad he's gone. Alita was basically all I cared about anyway. I mean, she she blew she, away she every other. Character. I do like the fact that Alita has a nice arc and that she's an unapologetic female hero, right? Yeah. Like yeah. it's not even a thing in the movies. That's just she is what she is. Yeah. You know, and she, but fantastic. she's beyond a hero. She was an ass kicker. Yeah. From her genesis, like the, mm -hmm. the she was created to be an ass kicker. She, you know, she had a really gorgeous uh, android body. Mm -hmm. I loved the design. I mean, you know, the guy made it. They made it for their daughter. It was a, it was, so yes. it was beautiful. Daughter named Alita. She died before, and and she was killed by one of the Doctor Ito's creations and yep. one of the guys that he augmented. Yeah, uh, such a such a sad tale. But, man, but that was Bob. a beautifully crafted body. But all that time I'm watching her, I'm looking at her body because I I saw the. I'm going to let you have this one. Go ahead, Bob. I talk saw, about I it. I saw the I saw the anime, and I'm like. All right, that body's cool, but that's not Alita's body. I mean, she needs a she needs a body. So, to so what ass. happened, Bob? What happened to her? 
<laughs> <laughs> so one of my favorite scenes, one of my favorite scenes, is she she's shown this crashed ship from from Mars. Right? Yes. This is one of the, she recognized so, it during during the battle that 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 actually set the. the made the future what this is uh, with one only one floating city left and remember it's not floating because of magic it's floating because of engineering which dr ito said which was a great line yeah, yeah. remember uh Alita's like is that magic and he's like no engineering uh, so great line but she goes in and she goes into the ship and she knows the codes and she's getting in and this has been there for centuries and no one's gotten as far as she did because nobody is yeah. is alita yeah. she goes in and there's this glowing plasma ball of energy she hits a button and it, it collapses, and there's the battle armor, the Berserker nanotech battle armor. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, there's her body. And there was, <laughs> there's wait, her wait, body. Wait. It wasn't her body. It was a body. She right. made it, was it a, her body. Yes. It, that, was a, it was a head. It was a, it was a, it was a suit. It was like a generic yep. nanotech Berserker suit that I guess any one of her people in, in, in her group of her uh, assassins uh, but it was it a body, though, right? It, it was, was just a body. It wasn't no something head. you put on. It was something you put your head on to. Yeah, yeah. right. So it was a torso. Yeah. So then, so then they put it on. I, and I didn't really know it was nanotech or anything yet. They put it on, and then the body starts starts like doing stuff <laughs> and getting smaller and adapting. Well, it and, ripples. And, it, it moves in a way that uh, that right. normal materials don't move. It, right. it ripples and it, tr it transforms itself. So this is this is cyborg parts on steroids. Yeah. It's, it's nanotech. It's actually integrating with her mind. It knows. It actually knows what her body concept is. All right. Where's that in the brain, Steve? Is that like it's in there somewhere. somewhere. All right. Right? It's so, in there somewhere. Sure. So her body, it turns, it becomes more feminine or whatever. And um, and uh, the suit, I don't know who designed that suit. It was, I mean, it was, beautiful. It was gorgeous. This yeah. thing was absolutely a vision. Yeah. This, is so a movie, this is a movie where you need good set design and concept design and costume yeah. design. Oh, my God. This I, is I, all I, about the artistic creation of this movie. I know? am on the verge of going to Hot Topic and getting an Alita action figure, not a doll, an action figure. <laughs> Of her in her robot body, and it's oh, it's so expensive, her but it's so body. it's so good. Now this body, this isn't just a cyborg body. This thing is actually she could feel, she yeah, could sense. Absolutely. She, this is this is a, the most amazing robot body that. You know, is that, that your I, favorite part of the movie? Uh yeah. When she got that body, yeah, oh my yeah. God, and I knew. All right, this is the this is the Alita that I remember from the anime that's going to start really kicking ass. Yeah. And, and it's self-healing. Yep. Yep. As soon as she was stabbed, yeah. I'm like, self-heal, please self-heal, please self-heal. And she did. It's like, yep, that's it. That's nanotech. Of course I mean, it would. So one of my favorite concepts no in the movie. No necessary. God, I loved her oh, heart. So awesome. I love that her heart could, you know, it was it was a monolith of power. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And this wasn't, I thought they would say, yes, there's a fusion reactor, a little nope. nano-fusion reactor in her heart. That I would have been very happy with that. But no, they went a step above an antimatter reactor that anti could power reactor. a city. Antimatter. To power probably, a city. Probably need 10 grams of matter in there and she could be go for centuries. That was a that was a cool little touch that they didn't even yeah. need to do. I don't, maybe it's in the, the manga, I don't know. Probably not, because it was written uh, a while ago. But that was a great touch, man. Oh, a without a doubt, and it was it was man. beautiful too. It was cool, and and, and you know the, the symbolism was obvious when she took mm. her heart out of her chest. Oh god, that was yeah. the moment where I'm really like, he doesn't deserve it. Yeah, no, you know, don't like, give him you know, your heart. No, he you, didn't deserve it. You're like, don't give it to that. Just yeah, right. No way. Not even yeah. close. Um, but imagine that that heart could run a city. Yeah, a city. That's imagine when they had hearts like on the shelves. Like there's a hundred antimatter hearts. You could have done. Imagine yeah. what they had. Well, I, li I like to envision though that it wasn't that simple. Like the. the She's expensive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, let's not forget, there's a human brain in there. There's a yes. human being in there. You know, and it was it was a, a fact that I had to read after the movie. I didn't fully realize watching the movie. You said that in the movie, you just missed it. They, yeah. They, she's got a human brain. Yeah. yeah, so she was born. She's a person. Oh, no, yeah, she's absolutely. a person. My question was, was her head, was her face real? Was her face a robotic part or was that she real said, skin? He said, oh, you are 100% cyborg. Yeah, her I brain think, is. I think case. it's a human brain and everything okay, right. else. Okay. That's, that's yeah. the, what I would get the impression yeah. I got from the, what was said in the movie. Yes, and he said to her, "You have to eat to feed your brain." Yeah, to feed your brain. Yeah, so yeah, I that, think so. That blue fluid is like her circulation, I guess, right. somehow. I right, guess. Right, right. Um, so you know, the other things to consider here too, like the the supporting characters. So Jennifer Connelly's character was a Chiron, uh, who was the you know the mm -hmm. former spouse. Of, of the doctor, oh, Dr. Rito, Dr. Yeah. Rito, right? And, and both cool. from Salem and then now back down yes. in the slums. And she's she was great. It. Great and, character. And you know what I liked about her was that she wasn't like a, uh, a one trick right. bad person. Wasn't a cardboard villain. She was a person with feelings yeah. and motivations, and you couldn't totally predict where she was going to go with things because she was conflicted. That's right. Conflicted characters are always awesome, great plot devices. And they, so it was good. They definitely used her well. And nice surprise little you know, ending. Yeah, without fate a doubt. For her. 
Absolutely. Yeah, I didn't, yeah, I didn't see that coming, and I thought that they they might have telegraphed it a little bit better. They, I thought they telegraphed it pretty well. They? You knew that you weren't getting a free trip up to the city. I mean, that wasn't happening. Something else was oh, happening. Oh, I, I knew that. I, yeah. I mean, especially after seeing the anime. I knew in the, in the anime, my, this is like a 12-year-old memory. I'm thinking um, when I thought that they were going to let Vector, Vector was going to get um, the kid, the boyfriend, to Salem. And I remember from the anime, uh, somebody was going to be sent up and they opened the box and there's all these body parts cut, cut up. Yeah. And that, you're, yeah, you're going to Salem, but you're going in pieces. And yeah. that's exactly what happened to uh, yeah. Jennifer Connelly. Oh my Con God, I know. And all they wanted was the hands, the eye, and the eye brain. And that, and that was it, right? But wait, was I mean, she still alive? Yes, in her there? eyes were moving, bro. So she was still why, alive. Why, what are they going to do to experiments. her? Experiments. Going to do experiments. Or on, put her in a side. Put her in a yeah, yeah, body. And do God knows what to her. But I know. Yeah. Well, I guess it isn't a free ride. Oh my God. Like meaning, like yeah, she's going to be some type of thing. At, yeah. Moving yeah. Forward, not just for somebody's cool amusement. I liked Ed Norton's cameo at the end. Yeah, I didn't know it was that guy. I know you could yeah. unrecognizable. Really, that was well done because we're good at recognizing pretty good faces. And I did not know it was him until he took his glasses off. And uh, I was like, oh, my God, it's Norton. Yeah. I think he's fantastic. Norton? And, and whatever. <laughs> How would you? So <laughs> can we please talk about the yes. bar fight with all the cyborgs? Oh, my God. That I, was wonderful. That bar fight, I felt it coming. I, you know what yeah. I mean? I'm sitting there, and I'm like, it would be pretty cool if we, we saw some action here. You know what <laughs> right. I mean? It was good timing. And then yeah. she gives this speech, and it was kind of like a wah, wah, wah. Like she tries to give this you know, speech to fire them up. It doesn't work. You know, I thought that it was a good speech. But on that group, that group, it wasn't going to work. But it kind of worked. It worked on some of them, just mm -hmm. not in the way that she thought. Right, right. And if I looked at some of those scenes, those fight scenes in slow motion, one of my favorites was when, um, who was the punk pretty boy cyborg? It was Z uh, Z uh, Zappin? Z yeah. Zapan? Zapan. So, so he, he walks over to her, and he's cocky because he has no idea what, and, and he we've has been, no idea what a lead is all about. But the gun has been loaded already to be fearful of him. Mm -hmm. He's right. He, he's he was the, strutting through the city looking, looking for people he's to kill uh, bounties. So he he grabs her. He grabs her, and she did so fast. They had to speed it up. But what she did was his hand was like right here. She goes around his arm, grabs a cable in his neck, yeah. <laughs> and goes bam, nails his head in the table. That was an amazingly fast and very cool move. What a was, scene! Oh man! Yeah. And then that's when all, all that an amazing fight. Mm -hmm. That choreography must have taken months. To, to nail down, and then you've got you've got I don't know who the actor is, but he pl played Lapidus on Lost, the awesome uh, pilot. Mm -hmm. he's, so Fahey. what, what he's, character? He 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 was the, the pilot. He was the helicopter pilot. He was one of the plane pilots towards the end. What was when, he in Alita? He was he was the cyborg sitting there with the dogs. He yeah, was the with dog. the dogs. Right. That's the guy I thought looked like Burt Reynolds. Yes, and that's yes. why I like that character. So he's <laughs> sitting there, and I just love that guy. And he and he turned out to be one of the cool cyborgs. Yeah. And when he did not fight Alita, he loved the dogs. And then he had that line at the end where he was like, he uh, when the yeah. the big monstrosity hulky dude walked away, and he was like, he didn't like dogs, you know, yeah. so he didn't like him. So that was great. It was a great little touch. A so little touch. Were those cyborg dogs or were they full robotic I, dogs? I think I think they were. We don't know. They were cyborgs. They yeah, were, I think every, cy I think everything right. is pretty much based that's on. The, that's there's the no tech. real. There's no real sense of, of AI anywhere. That's right. And this, yeah, this yeah. is all. It's all about cy uh, cyborgs and cyborgization or whatever so, that word is. I think it's a good franchise. I hope this oh takes God. off. I hope it's, it takes off. I do think it has it's, potential. It's not a foregone conclusion. Yeah. How about that, that, guys? The, the, let's give it to them just for coming up with a movie that isn't a retread. You yeah. know, yes, it, it has its source material, which most which is fine. Most good There's movies. There's plenty yeah. of great source material exactly. out there. Why don't they use it? So and, I'm excited about Oh my God, look at all the bad adaptations in the past. The recent, World War Z, which was pathetic. Yeah, it was a joke. I mean, this is like, the, let's, let's spend $10 million on the title and then have nothing to do with that fantastic book and make a crappy zombie movie. Um, That's how good also, the title was, though. That's how yes, powerful that course. title was. And then you also have like Ghost in the Shell, um, which uh, did not live up to expectations. A lot mm -hmm. of people think that it did, it did not. They did not understand the franchise, mm -hmm. um, and they did not do it, the justice that it deserved. Whereas uh, James Cameron, he this guy knew Alita. He yeah. loved Alita. He was working on it in the early aughts, mm -hmm. and he wanted. It. But then, um, but then uh, Pandora, Avatar came along, and his whole life apparently is now Avatar, and he's even coming. He's working on the. The sequel and the and the and the follow up to that. So he handed off Alita to uh, Robert Rodriguez and said, "Here you go." He gave him a 180 page script that he already written and 600 pages of notes. And Rodriguez took all that and morphed it with help, of course, with a lot of great people into this this wonderful, entertaining movie. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, I think I'm really disappointed. 
that uh, the box office in the States is, is, is not that great. 60, Why do you 70, think that is? I don't understand it. I just don't understand it. There's it's nothing such, else out there right it's now. It's such an entertaining it's just that movie. Time of year. Right, and now Marvel's going to come out um, in a few mm -hmm. days. And uh, I think and, and um, Elite is going to be, you know, it's going to really even dip down. But it's made much better than anyone expected. China, it, it made uh, an amazing amount of money. Mm -hmm. Overseas, it's done great. Uh, but it's at 350 million box office. Yeah, That's the, not good enough necessarily to warrant a sequel. I'm hoping that they'll get up in the mm -hmm. 400s. I really want to see a sequel to this. I, I think they really kicked ass. I really want to see some enthusiasm. I just don't understand why. Especially with that ending, man. The ending oh, it was, was so. Set up. It, it was, was such an ending. awesome setup with her lifting the sword up. Yeah. Um, and the fact that she's got that sword from the guy, like you know, oh, he didn't yeah, it's a lightsaber. It. It's a damn lightsaber. Yeah. And you looked at, you see her battle armor. This is that's her motoball um, armor yeah. over her nanotech armor, which is she's a joke. Doubly armored, yeah. right? But it is gorgeous armor either yeah. way. Ah, uh, more Alita. <laughs> see it twice. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go again. Let's go see it again. Yeah. So I highly recommend people seeing. It. I mean, mm -hmm. I give I give this movie an eight. Yeah, I was like an A minus. Yeah. Not to mix the uh, gradings. Yeah, up. right? What do you give it, Bob? I give it a solid A. That's How about in Celsius? A. What would you give it in Celsius? <laughs> That's a solid A. So, guys, if you enjoy the show, please go to Alpha Quadrant and number six.com where you can get links to all of the places that we are online. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on Patreon. Um, that is Alpha Quadrant 6.com on the internet. Till next time. <laughs>